So I posted this video, really, really, really important information from the Dirk, Dirk, Dirk yeah. told myself I'm not going to edit it. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. My name is Mike Perrine. This is the Everyday Detox Podcast. And on this episode, I am once again going to do an unedited, not overthought, unscripted episode where I talk about some things that have happened on social media recently. Uh, before we do that, big thank you to everyone that's ever listened to this podcast. You can really help out by liking a YouTube video, subscribing to the channel, subscribing to the podcast on whatever podcast app you listen to podcasts on and you can support this podcast by dropping down into the uh, description and either visiting us at everyday detox academy where the gil jacobs Masterclass on deep tissue cleansing just released uh, and you can enroll in one of our master classes or you can buy some velasta astaxanthin through the link and use the code all caps pure p-u-r-e in the description okay so I had posted a reel on Instagram, uh, I guess about two weeks ago now, and uh, I'm going to play it here. You'll get to see the visual of it if you're watching this video on YouTube. If not, you're going to get the general idea when I, um, when you listen to the audio. Uh, I'm going to play that right now real quick. Okay, so earlier today when we were doing that Q&A, when I was still at the office, we were talking about mucoid plaque. So I thought I would show you what real mucoid plaque looks like. Now. As a colon hydrotherapist, I generally, on my social media accounts, I try to show the pretty side of the cleansing life. All of the berries and the fruits and the smoothies and the juices and all the great stuff that comes with this lifestyle. I try not to show a lot of gross shit, uh, but this is gonna be a little bit gross. So, skip ahead the next story if you don't wanna see this stuff. If you want an eye-opening experience to see how different diets actually affect the inside of our body and affect the internal terrain, then keep watching. 45-year-old female with breast cancer. Six months prior to this exam, she had a lumbectomy and radiation treatment. There are marked fecal retention in this picture. This patient had been a heavy wine drinker with a heavy animal protein diet, including cheese. And just one quick thing to understand when we're looking at colonoscopy footage, what we're seeing in those videos is not the conditions of their intestine on a normal day. That's the cleanest version of their intestine because they took a very powerful laxative in preparation for that colonoscopy. So they've actually blown out the weight of all of that sticky waste and the pressure of that gas that's normally sitting inside of them. And what we're looking at is the residue that's stuck all over the walls. But on a normal day, they have all of it, A, B, and C, just sitting there, and that's the real toxic load that auto-intoxicates the system. So I posted this video, really, really, really important information from the Dirk, Dirk yeah, told myself I'm not gonna edit it, from the work of Dr. Hiromi Shinya, who invented the colonoscope. Uh, he wrote a number of books, The Enzyme Factor, he wrote uh, The Microbe Factor, he wrote The Rejuvenation Enzyme, and uh, a bunch of other books, and a really, really interesting man um, who, to varying degrees, is into some form of natural living, and he would clean up people's intestines with a uh, sort of a whole foods diet. He was really into alkaline water. He invented the colonoscope, first person to remove... Um, to remove uh, cancerous growth from, an in, from the intestines without cutting the abdomen open. He used a, a little snare device and he was able to um, remove it that way. So much less invasive, even though I don't know if you can call colonoscopy um, non-invasive, but a lot less invasive than splitting your entire abdomen open and opening the colon lengthwise and going in that way. So, um, you know, great contribution to medicine. Uh, and his colonoscopy footage made it onto YouTube. So I started watching it and you can see all sorts of colonoscopy footage on YouTube. But what's really important is that it shows what real mucoid plaque looks like. So I posted that reel on Instagram and I've talked about this in the academy. I've talked about this on podcasts. I've shown this footage before. And somebody wrote in the comment section, they said, uh, how would this look, meaning how would the conditions of this person's intestine look after a seven day water fast? Now, I don't, I don't know what they think, the way they think it would look. Maybe they already know and they're just asking for the sake of 
the the banter and and, and conversation around it. Um, but I feel like there's, um, I feel like there's a lot of misconception about how a lot of these practices work. So if somebody's intestine looked like that, and just I said it at the end of that reel, that that that's not the condition of their intestine on a normal day. That's just the stuff that just, just is too stubborn and too stuck and too cemented to come out. On a normal day, it's loaded with like 50 times more of that filling the entire cavity, creating pressure. And we're not looking at all the gas pockets that would be all scattered throughout that, also creating pressure, releasing toxic waste gases that can diffuse up into the tissue and so on. So the weight of that waste and the pressure of that gas affects the, the chemistry tremendously. Um, so uh, how would that look after a seven-day water fast? It would probably look worse. Now, when we listen to uh, videos and podcasts and uh, Instagram stuff and we or we read about fasting. We hear about autophagy and um, going into ketosis and weight loss and detoxification. All that's true on a cellular level. But if somebody's colon already looks like that, that means their system is totally polluted. And I don't mean just the system of the colon. I mean, their liver's backed up. I mean, their entire cell structure probably has backed up poisons in it because they're in a, they're in a congested, cemented, toxic, uh, pressurized state at the core. So they're not going to feel well. So someone like that has no business. Someone with a colon like that has no business water fasting. That's step 50. They need to take steps one, two, three, four, five, right? They, they need to start a little intermittent fasting, you know, shortening that eating window. They need to definitely look at how much water they're drinking. They need to get out the stuff that's sticking up that gut. And we know it's going to be dairy products, refined flours, heavy fatty meat. Like that's almost always what it is. Like nobody, you know, eats too many pumpkin seeds or too much cashew butter or something and like, you know, has a cemented intestine like that. Um, so they need to get those foods out. They need to start getting Vitality Broom Cleanse foods into their diet. Uh, they probably need to eat some really good macrobiotic style food, bowls, you know, like quinoa bowls and things you know like they need to like that kind of like buddha bowl stuff you know you don't want to go too hard you wouldn't put someone like that on a fast you wouldn't put someone like that on a um on a raw food diet you wouldn't put them on a fruitarian diet you wouldn't do like any of this radical stuff with somebody like that um you would they would need to do some transition work and they would need to start cleaning up the internal terrain of the body slowly steps one two three four Seven day water fast is step 50. Someone like that stops eating, they're not going to feel well, and that intestine is going to look worse because they're going to loosen up a lot of endogenous waste, which is probably going to make its way to some degree into the intestine, but it's not going to get eliminated because, first of all, that person obviously has trouble with elimination to begin with. Second of all, uh, most people, even healthy people, like that have a lot of bowel movements, they go on even a juice fast. And a juice fast can be very stimulating. Juice fast will make you move your, uh, can make many people move their bowels, um, uh, even if they're not taking solid food in. Um, you know, juice juice will stimulate bowel movements. Uh, but the reason we do colonics on juice fast uh, is because a lot of people do not only have this endogenous waste entering the intestine from the detoxification process, but they their bodies are used to the stimulation of eating. And once you take out that food, that nervous system throughout the intestine doesn't get those same signals. And for many people, they just stop having bowel movements or they have one every three, four, five days now because they're only drinking juice. And if you're not even drinking juice and you're drinking water, you're really left up to the strength of your own body. So as Gil Jacobs would say, something like that would be where the rich get richer. Or Dr. Bishy would say, he would say, you know, when you water fast, you're creating a crisis in your body. You're creating, creating an outpouring of acidic waste a, into a system um, uh, very rapidly and suddenly. So you do that when you're in a really good space. You don't create a crisis when you're already in a crisis because now you're doubling the crisis. So if you're already sick and toxic, you wouldn't water fast. You do the groundwork first. You got to clean out a little bit and then you do it. So this way, um, when we completely remove all food, you're not overwhelmed with detoxification uh, responses. So, um, so that person's colon would look worse. They would feel worse. And that's a step 50. That's not a step one, two, and three. Um, and that's really what they need to be focusing on. Uh, so anyway, I thought that was a really interesting concept. I thought it'd be really cool for a podcast just to talk about that because uh, I see people, you know, looking um, and, and giving suggestions to people that are step 50s. 
especially in the comment section, especially in Facebook groups for some reason, for some reason. Uh, someone will say, oh, my God, I have all these horrible symptoms and I feel good. I'm trying to do this fruit diet or like whatever it is. And they're like, oh, my, God, my hair is falling out. I don't feel good. I'm too skinny. Yeah, but what do I do? And then someone's like, do a 40 day water fast. And it's like, dude, like what? Like worst advice ever. Like you trying to kill somebody in theory. Yes. 40 days, no water, all the self-correction and detox is going to happen. But that's not how it plays out. You have to be in an elevated state. And if you're ever doing a long water fast anyway, it's to get, it's either it's time to go next level for you and you're completely committed and emotionally and mentally grounded and eating clean and doing work like that if you're doing a long water fast. And by long, I mean more than three to five days, you know, um, you know, if you, especially if you're doing one of the big 40 day ones. And just a little side note, Dr. Bishy has told me that he said, you know, I actually think it's, it's more, it can be more dangerous and destructive to do these really long water fasts. He goes, I wish over the years I would have done more like 10 day or less water fasts um, than, you know, he's done them like, I don't know what the longest one was, but like he's fasted himself down to 88 pounds on water. I think he did 52 days or something like that on water. It's, he said it in my podcast a couple of times. I don't, I don't recall what the actual numbers were, but, um, you know, he said, I think those could actually create some damage at some point. Um, he said, I wish I would have done shorter uh, water fasts. And we know that like autophagy really peaks at 72 hours. It's like three days. You know, um, between 17, starts at about 17 hours and goes to like 72 hours. It really starts to peak. And then you don't put your body in a very stripped, stripped state. The other reason people might be doing longer water fasts, though, aside from self-correction on a physical level, is it, it might be a, a spiritual uh, path that somebody's on. And those are, of course, very appropriate. And you should know what you're doing if you're doing something like that. Um, but um, yeah, they're step 50s. And people will be telling people to do things like that. Um, when they haven't even done the fundamental work. It's really important to do the fundamental work. Um, it's going to be much more therapeutic and we want it to be therapeutic. We don't just want to like power through something that feels horrible, that makes us miserable and leaves us weaker uh, than when we started. We want to be elevating when we do this cleansing work. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the podcast. Um, I'll see you all on the next one.